Welcome back to the show. We got a lot to talk about. Bitcoin breaks $50,000. How about that? Breaching the 50K mark. Congratulations to Bitcoin. Run, Forrest, run. That's what I say. Yeah. And I'm a holder. So look, keep running. That's all I got to say. XRP at 54 cents. We'll talk about that. But what would you say about a $15 XRP maybe later this year? Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? I wouldn't be upset. But you know what? I want to talk about a larger reason, too, why I've not left this space, why I'm not selling XRP. You know, once we sweat out the SEC lawsuit and anything else we need for clarity, why would I ever sell until the X factor is achieved for XRP? Let's get into that and roll this beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above at the top of the screen. Everything we're talking about here, let's go ahead and look at this. We're at a $1.5 trillion market cap for crypto broadly. And let's just take a look here. We're at $925 billion for Bitcoin alone, soon to be $926 billion market cap for Bitcoin, almost a trillion dollars. And we're going to talk about what that means for governments around the world in just a second here and looking at xrp coming in right now at 53 cents 0 0.5340 let's keep this going i want to focus on bitcoin first right now and congratulate everyone who's in the game it ranged and it's been going between 47,360 and it's high today so far is 50,378 sitting almost at 49,000 flat right now 49,006 dollars one has to say what a ride this is has been what a ride this has been but you know i do feel in the short term there are some hurdles that sit in front of bitcoin one is is the fact that we have to think about the idea of um the threat of price we're going to talk about that in just a second with a news clip and we're going to hear these gentlemen speak about this and then we're going to remark on it but there's really three things in in the way here one is the size of bitcoin the enormity it's getting ready to be a trillion dollar market cap for the asset alone let alone the crypto space that to me is is a is a conversation for governments around the world knowing that bitcoin is not backed by any government at all right is money of the people if you will so two you have the energy usage of bitcoin and that aspect that it is very bad for the environment as far as that goes energy usage right and then three the other thing that we really need to talk about about this is just the idea of um uh, the Tether Bitcoin lawsuit. So let's go ahead and get started. The one thing I wanted to start with is that NYDIG files to create a new Bitcoin ETF, becoming the latest firm to seek approval from the SEC. What I wanted to say to that is, is we have seen many attempts here in the United States to get a Bitcoin ETF, and we haven't done it as of yet. Uh, I'd like to see it happen. I want to congratulate Canada because they just a couple days ago announced that they're going to have a Bitcoin ETF, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. But here in the States, it's been a real hurdle. And I think that hurdle won't get crossed uh, or jumped over until we see these other things that I've brought up to be dealt with. For one, let's listen to just a quick clip here from CNBC about what these two gentlemen are talking about because of Bitcoin and its price and the possibility of it being a threat to governments because of its size. Listen to this issue. It broke through the $50,000 level just a short time ago. It's now up more than 70% since January First, so uh, it's come off a little bit right under that fifty thousand mark, but um, pretty extraordinary run, uh, no matter how you look at it. Joe, I just wish uh, I, I wish we knew all. I wish we could see into the future, Andrew, because I, it, all you need to do you, you take the total global financial system, right? Yep. Figure out what that is, uh, and then divide it by twenty one million. Well, first. Take the total financial system and decide what percentage of that could someday be crypto related or, or, or right. where crypto could or be play a role. 
right? Or Bitcoin related. Then divide that by 21 million. And that's where you get some scary numbers. And I don't know if they're legit or, or, or but at the same time, you worry about individual countries and governments, you know, that, that have a huge vested interest, for example, the United States and the dollar remaining the reserve currency. So what do they do? When yeah, what do they do, right? And that is a question you can bet your bottom dollar they are asking, and they've probably already resolved, and we don't know it yet. Uh, and Brad Garlinghouse said it best, and shout out to Digital Asset Investor for this actual tweet and sharing this here, because where I saw it. But he, along with this, he gave the quote from Brad Garlinghouse, governments are going to bring out their tanks before they give up their control of their money supply. No truer words have ever been spoken. And that's a fact, Jack. The governments of the world are not going to tolerate someone creating money out of thin air and allowing it to grow to the extent that it could challenge the sovereignty of their own country or currencies. I have said this and made this point many, many times over about XRP and the possible designation being a currency designation versus a security designation. And this is why I believe there's a potential that even if we get a currency designation, it will be one or two ticks away away from legal tender status like the fiat money of the world. The reason I believe that is because if not, you have exactly what these two gentlemen are really talking about with Bitcoin. And this could be with any crypto when it gets to a certain size. And that is that if it gets too big, it can challenge the currencies of the world. And that is a problem for governments around the world. And I don't believe they'll let that happen. So I think and I'm speculating, obviously, but through the unified framework that we're looking to get going forward for the whole space, I believe we could see a classification for these assets, be it securities or be it the fact that they're convertible uh, virtual currencies, you know, because they love that CVC phrase, convertible virtual currencies. And if we do see that, then I believe that, you know, we're looking at a possibility of it being just slightly differed in its definition that it could never truly change challenge uh the the currencies of the world but still help as far as a payment or exchange network as in the way uh people are using it now or the way xrp is designed for instance so that's my thought on that let's keep moving because then there's this you know like i said it's a bit of a trifecta here for bitcoin in the short term right is what do governments do about this this asset that's getting big and becoming digital gold and uh it's not backed by any government right and what do you do about the uh the energy usage of bitcoin knowing it is 120,000 times worse than uh, what XRP could provide, for instance, as an example, right? Uh, what do you do about the third point, which is the Tether lawsuit, if in fact it is found that uh, Tether is in default in the, in the manner of not backing the reserves properly because it is alleged in the actual lawsuit worth $1.4 trillion, by the way. It's the federal U.S. government federal government uh, suing uh, Tether. And if, in fact, that is an issue, they're alleging that Tether has minted Tether for customers who buy Bitcoin for which Tether is using Bitcoin to back the one-to-one -one reserves with. That in itself, if it is true, is the very definition of a Ponzi scheme. It doesn't get any more straight ahead than that. So if... All these three things are issues in the short term. At some point, I would expect a bit of a, an adjustment when they drop a unified framework, whenever that would be, right? But I mean, that's what I would expect. And I would think whatever changes need to happen would happen. And then it would, and then the whole market will probably take off for the better at that point. But I just want to lay that out there because I'm, I'm very happy for Bitcoin cracking 50 grand, but it doesn't mean that it look I, i'm happy for the the stock market right there's liquidity pouring into the stock market and it's constantly going up that doesn't change the fact that the stock market is overbought right and the liquidity can continue to pour in there for the uh, short term and that's fine but it doesn't change the fact that stock stocks are overbought right just like it doesn't change the fact that it hit 50 grand and these three issues that i laid out are very relevant issues for long term for bitcoin 
So we'll see. All right. Now coming here, I want to talk about the X factor, baby. Yeah. The X factor and why I'm not selling XRP. You know, once I sweat out the SEC lawsuits and anything else that's needed for clarity, why would I ever sell until the X factor has been achieved for XRP? You know, that's where I'm at. Now, let's look at the short term, because what would you think about a $5, $10, $15 XRP, right? Because that's what this chart here, and shout out to Han Solo, who retweeted it, and Saif Alzarani, who actually put the chart together. And shout out to you both here. And look, there's some solid lines here to look at. It's a very clean chart, the way he's laid it out. And if you just follow the large long-term trend, right, you can see where this goes. If you follow the short term from this peak here, you get three touches as it moves through. You really start to come up with this little this little area here and you and where we currently are. And we have to watch and see, do we end up going down and hitting the resistance here and like gathering steam again, selling off and gathering steam and then make the push up? However it goes, I think the long term trend here is the one that's really speaking to me. So when I look at this, I'm pretty excited about the idea. At some point, we get above this. And when we do find support above this line, because it is the long term uh, on here that he's looking at, I see a lot of faith in this once we do get above it. And as you see, so did his chart prediction here. And that would put us somewhere, I don't know, approximately in the middle of this year, another six months at a, maybe a $15 XRP. Hey, I'm not saying it'll happen, but I'm seeing a nice chart that says leading indicators are suggesting, right? So you can bet it's something I'll keep an eye on. But in truth, that's not the total X factor. That's the short term. For me, the X factor is the XRP is an efficient bridge between two assets, including stable coins and CBDCs. Uh, David Schwartz says it best in 28 seconds. Shout out to Bank XRP for this one. Um, XRP is an efficient bridge between two assets, including stable coins and CBDCs. It's neutral. It's jurisdictionless. It's censorship resistant. It doesn't have any central counterparty that you need to trust. So it can be used as a sort of universal bridge. And blockchains are what provide that level playing field so that banks and regulators can live in a multi-asset future without having to deal with hundreds of different APIs, hundreds of different uh, controllers or different rule sets. And there you have it. And to me, that's the X factor. And that's the X factor I'm waiting for once we have the clarity we need from the SEC lawsuit and anything else that needs to come through and happen. That's where I'm at. Because at the end of the day, that X factor is going to unlock potential like this. This was a tweet from <clears throat> a response to Digital Nomad Investor. Shout out to you, Digital Nomad Investor. People are saying it is not my idea or is not my idea of a reliable source, he says, but even the IMF needs developers, and I'm sure Ripple has good ones. That doesn't mean XRP will be a reserve asset. More likely it's an ESDR, an electronic special drawing right from the IMF. And, you know, whether it is or it isn't, Jim is obviously acknowledging in this that an SDR is a treasury note. So an electronic version of a treasury note, which, again, by the way, lines up with Gary Gensler's thought, who is looking to head the SEC once he's confirmed. And it does look like he will be confirmed once they do that. Uh, those are securities. Right. And actually, to be more specific. Those are bonds. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if we saw that kind of security designation for XRP. But the overall salient point here that I want to bring home is the idea that even Jim Rickards, Rickards, the gold bug, sees the opportunity for XRP in 2018, responding to DNI in this tweet, to be and serve as an electronic bond for the SDR, right? And to, and to serve that position in such a role that he could see it become that liquid, right? Now, the other idea is that XRP was designed to be $10,000 from Mark Phillips back in 2019. Well, where did he get that from? Well, he didn't pull it out of thin air. He actually got that from Arthur Brito, one of the co-developers of the ledger. That's where that came from. You know, these numbers come from somewhere and they don't come from the thin air. 
the prediction about this was really made originally from Arthur Brito saying that XRP was de- should be designed to scale to s- serve 7.5 billion people on Earth. That's the point. And it's right here. Uh, XRP must be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people. We'll come back to this quote, but it does provide insight into scale Ripple's ambitions. And uh, in some of the main features of XRP to support my claim that it was designed to carry $10,000 worth of value. That claim was originally made by uh, co-founder of the XRP ledger, Arthur Brito, right? And that's where he got that. And it's in this article somewhere. I'm just not seeing it right the second or I would, uh, uh, I would give it to you. Let's see. Uh, I thought it was right here. But at any rate, you get the gist of it. That's where this came from. That, to me, more X factor. I'm not leaving, especially once we get the clarity, knowing that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which was used and it made an effective rule last July to uh, make virtual currency XRP ripple as a solution which could be used to affect settlement for transfers between banks and credit unions. It says it right here in the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Now, when I look at these things, all these things become X factor to me. That's what they become. Because to me, this is what I'm waiting for. And once we get the clarity we need for this asset and this space, and I think we get it all, to be honest, with you, when, you, when we get it. Once we get that, I feel like there is there begins the opportunity for me to see the X factor come to life for that ultimate end goal, the holy grail of central banks and sophisticated financial institutions and small medium enterprises and payment providers and remittance companies and everyone else, gamers and gaming companies and any other use case that you could imagine going to work to use XRP back end to make their business or their model more efficient and scalable and secure. And that's what I see. And that's the X factor of why I'm here. There's no question about it. Now, while we are here, I think it's wise to take a look at this. Guys, if you haven't downloaded the Link2 app and join the community, you should. I know there's not as many accredited investors. You do need to be an accredited investor to buy these things. But I want you to think of this for a moment. If the X factor that I'm talking about with the SDR and the serving the $1.14 quadrillion market for different asset classes, which means that we would be settling like all of these things, right? Derivatives, unfunded government liabilities, non-monetary commodities, private business real estate, corporate uni bonds, right? You know, securitized debt, uh, listed stocks, government bonds, treasury bills, paper money, gold. All of this runs on the ledger. (laughs) And you tell me what the price should be, right? You tell me what the price should be. You know, that's why I'm here, because I believe all of these things are going to happen. And when all of these things do happen, I think all of us will be accredited investor status almost overnight when it does happen. And if you are, it will open the door for us in manners that we never have seen before. And it will give us the opportunity to be able to pick up and have an opportunity to participate in some of these things. That's why I tell you to download the free app, follow these things, prepare yourself, prepare yourself for where your life is going to go, not for where it's at today. No doubt about it. Now, looking here, I just want to remind you, Ripple, Kraken, Uphold, these things, Marketa, they're sold out right now, but keep an eye on them because when they come in they don't last long that's gonna do it for me hit the like and subscribe xrp has got the x factor waiting for it and when we get the clarity i think we see the x factor play out all right make sure you hit the like and subscribe leave a comment below make sure you share with somebody you know and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing check out the links in the description box and the comment section there's some really great deals and products for any of the services that you may want or need they are trusted vetted links i'll catch all of you on the next one